We're about ready to go racing, and it's double green. Here we come. Underway into turn number one. Chase Dietz looking down on the inside already on his day de his debut out here with the Silver Crown Series, pestering for that number two spot. Logan Seavey throttles up on the outside of the 22 car. Down into the corner we go. We're going to tiptoe into turn number three, make sure everyone gets through smoothly. Thus far, that's the situation. Dirty Swanson out front. We forgot to mention to the fact to you that they have spotters up here in the stands. So spotters telling them, helping them get around the racing surface as we got a four-car battle for second, third, fourth, and fifth on the field. Cody Swanson stretching his legs on him. And Cody Swanson, his spotter is Jordan, his wife, right now out front. He's won these events. This would be another step towards an unprecedented eighth championship. Up front, here's a running race lead. Side by side, here we go. Brady Bacon feeling feisty down on the inside for the number nine car trying to come to call. And Cody Swanson, Swanson's got to wick it up just a tick quicker down into the corner, working the middle of the racetrack for the number 77 car. Bacon looking around the outside for the number nine. That was interesting to watch. See, he was going to drop the nose and drive down to the inside, and then that lane shut down when Chase Dietz got back out there again. Dietz coming to play one more time for the number 86 car, but that is a good three-car battle, a chess match, if you will, down into turn number three, and we're going to go three wide in that position. Looks like Russ Games should try to lip his way back in and get here to see if the Peru Indiana veteran can get it down. CV able to pick off a couple spots, moves up for the number 22. He now inherits, or not, not inherits, but grabs the number three spot and goes to work on Brady Bacon. CV working on that number nine car down into the corner. And we're just all willing the 51 car. Good job by Russell. CV out of turn number four, looks to the inside. Bacon to the outside. CV slides down into turn number one, side by side and wheel to wheel. Out of turn number two, down to back straightaway. Can't quite out muscle the Macho Man. Yeah, Logan CV, who was the master of the dirt of this series, Ledger's Deets dies down low. Wants wow. to take him three wide down into turn number three and four onto the front straightaway. CV rolling for all he's worth. Deets is coming to play. Right there, the battle for second, third, and fourth on the field is up front. Cody Swanson catches some breathing room. That was quite a move by Chase Deeds, but you cannot punish your tires. There goes CV. CV down the inside. Slide jump up across the racetrack. Picks off as we're three wide again. Deeds challenging down on the inside. Again, I'll say it again. He does not want to get sideways that often in a long distance affair. Now 34 laps remain on this one, and again, Brady Bacon up alongside the 22. Now CV separates out away from him. Dietz goes on the attack, down to the inside, trying to work on Bacon. That's a battle for third. Out across the racing surface goes Chase Dietz. He'll try to follow on Logan. cv has got Bacon picked off. Chase Dietz may have clipped something down on the inside. That front end bounced up on that uh, hot rod right there. That 86 car working P3. Back behind Brady Bacon, fourth on the field. And still, Justin Grant cannot figure out a way to get around Mitchell. Moles. And CV's trying to figure out a way to get to the front, and he may get it done right here. Oh, made a move up across the racetrack. That thing got tight or loose or some situation there. The 22 shot him up across, picks off Cody Swanson. CV came into tonight the national points leader at Silver Crown, and again, he has a little issue getting down into turn number one. I wonder if he's got a power steering issue. Coming to call into turn number three. Chase Dietz is right there. That little plume of power coming off of him last time in turn number two. We'll see if he does it again. Yep, high side. Eases down into the corner, works the wheel, punches the throttle, skiff out wide, and not catch the cushion this time. Shortened up that exit coming out turn number two, and that's going to pay dividends. Here's your run for second. And see if he can hold that low grip. It looks like he will, Chet. Cody will try to dive in the rock, but no. He just let her sweep out across, caught the cushion, and then fired himself into the number two spot for Dietz. He's the one up there hammering around, roosting that dirt out over the wall under the armco as the white flag comes out, and he'll take it around one more time. White flag comes out. London CV trying to repeat as a silver crown winner. He'll be repeat the feed as he heads down the back straightaway into turn number three. Picked up the big win here last year. He's down into three and four he goes. Checkered flag coming out. Logan Seavey's going to win at Port Royal Speedway. Up and out of the car. Make some noise for Logan Seavey.
Speedway with the USAC Silver Crown Champ Car Series. For Logan Seavey out of Sutter, California, thanking his lucky stars that we get to run champ cars around this big, beautiful half mile. A remarkable performance came together right when it mattered. Logan, what was the defining feature that told you it was time to go on that restart? Yeah, I uh, you know, knew my car could maneuver. Um, what I kind of struggled with, with last year was cutting the middle, so I kind of stayed down in the middle pretty early, just trying to make sure I could get, get, get down there and turn the middle and, and drive off good. And um, once I was uh, settled in and, you know, I don't know, eight, ten laps in, I moved up to the top in three and four and uh, really got some speed going. So, um, yeah, not really uh, my style to float around the middle. I really wanted to get up there and, and run the wall, and we were able to do it in three and four and, and make speed. So, uh, man, just I uh, can't say enough about this whole team with uh, Ronnie and Robbie and uh, Glenn and everybody who works on this thing, Zach's here this weekend, and um, this thing is the best car by far right now, and I'm just cruising around here, and uh, man, it's so fun to drive when, uh, when you got good race cars, and, um, and we're just doing such a good job. The, the team's doing a good job with the car, and um, you know, we're just putting full nights together. I'm qualifying a little bit better, making my days a little bit easier, so uh, I kind of struggle a little bit qualifying in this series, but... We're getting a little better at that, and um, man, I just can't say enough about Rice Motorsports, Advocates Racing, everyone who uh, backs this car with Steeda and CGCPAs, and all of our partners. So it's a lot of a lot of work, and like I said, we kind of bonded our teams together a little bit here for this season to, to make sure we could to, could do it right, and uh, so far we're doing that. It's rare on a four-lap shootout that we see the leader not go to the bottom and block the guy behind him, especially when you have spotters in the stands. You go to the top in three and four, not to defend your position, but to pick up more speed. Whose call was that? Uh, that's, that was kind of mine you know, a little bit. We, we talked about it and, um, you know, I could tell that late in that run that the 86 was kind of, you know, maybe gaining or keeping up with us. And uh, I knew I could run into three harder, you know, obviously always when you have a big lead, you're not pushing as hard as you can. So I knew, um, you know, for a few laps, if I just rolled into three with a little bit more speed and kind of hit the wall a little bit harder that we'd be fine. So I wasn't worried about it. I knew my, my pace wasn't where it could be. And uh, this is how these races go. Like I said, when you're, when you're leading, you never really pushing as hard as you can as long as the guys in second it doesn't really matter how far you beat them by so uh, as long as you keep them behind you so um yeah i said ronnie does such a good job at spotting and setting this thing up uh you know he basically basically is why we're here and i just you know sit in the seat and, and get all the all the glory but it's really uh you know this whole team with ronnie and and rob and glenn and uh, uncle ronnie and uh, this whole team is just so much fun to race for he raved about it last year after he picked up a sweep with both USAC National Series, and at this point, I am certain it's still true. Logan Seavey loves Port Royal Speedway. He is your winner tonight at Eastern Storm.